Hello, I'm Dr. Angelo Landrasina, AKA Dermangelo. I'm a dermatologist and a skincare expert, and I'm so happy to welcome you back to my YouTube channel. I have gotten so many comments on social media asking me about tips for how to become a dermatologist, questions about why I became a dermatologist, and today we're gonna cover the entire process of becoming a derm. I'll also be sharing some advice and tidbits from my own personal story. Before we get into it, make sure you're subscribed so you get notified every time I upload. You can also follow along on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, all at Dermangelo. Now, a few points before we start. I went through the process of becoming a dermatologist in the United States. That is my experience and that's what I'm gonna cover today. The process will vary a little bit from country to country. However, I think that some of the points in today's video are going to be applicable no matter where you are. We also need to realize that the process of becoming a dermatologist or a doctor in general is going to be more difficult for different groups of people. I always talk about how it was so improbable for me to get to this point coming from a working class family where I am the first doctor. However, I am both Hispanic and white, and I basically get to go through this world living my life as a white man and having all of the privilege that goes along with that. Our entire medical system has been shaped in various ways by systemic racism, and that is something that we all need to recognize. At every step of this process, things are going to be more difficult for Black, Indigenous, and people of color, and that is something that needs to change. I'm going to link to some further reading about this topic in the description. Lastly, this is a really long, hard road. I'm gonna share an infographic from the American Academy of Dermatology here. Basically, what you should realize is that this is a, at least a 12 year process and can be even longer for some people. Like, you need to become a whole ass doctor before you're even a dermatologist. Which brings us to step one deciding that you want to become a dermatologist. For most people within the US medical system, they realize that they want to be a doctor before they realize that they want to be a dermatologist. I knew that I wanted to be a dermatologist first, and I'm sure for a lot of you skincare enthusiasts, that will be the first step. However, there's a lot that goes into becoming a dermatologist. Like, you need to literally become an entire doctor first. Uh, so it's not enough to just want to work with skin. So I quite often tell young people that are looking for advice that, uh, you know, it's not enough to just want to help people to become a doctor. There are a lot of careers in which you can help people. In much the same way, just wanting to work with skin and work with people with skin problems, um, becoming a dermatologist is not the only way to do that. It takes a lot of dedication. So you really need to know that this is the career you want. So according to the American Academy of Dermatology, a dermatologist is a doctor who specializes in conditions involving the skin, hair, and nails. A dermatologist can identify and treat more than 3,000 conditions. These conditions include eczema, psoriasis, and skin cancer, among many others. For me, I realized that I wanted to become a dermatologist when I was a teenager. I always say I was a really weird kid in that way. The first step for me was looking around the community that I grew up in in South Brooklyn and realizing how people um, related to their risk for skin cancer, specifically the risk posed by sun exposure and tanning beds. Now, when I was a teenager, everybody wanted to have bronze skin and they would go to any lengths to get it, whether that be baking under a tanning bed, laying out on the beach, covered in baby oil, or even getting spray tans. For me, it kind of baffled me how people acted about these practices and how they did that risk assessment, even though they knew that tanning could increase their risk for skin cancer. I compared it to how people acted about smoking and how it increased their risk for lung cancer. I said to myself, you know, if people wouldn't do stupid things to their internal organs just to look better, why would they treat their skin differently? And this clued me into something really important. Our skin, hair, and nails are really important to our social functioning. They can say a lot about who we are, about our personalities, about our overall health. 
This could manifest in really beautiful ways. Uh, think intricate makeup, beautiful nail art, um, meaningful hairstyles. It also means that when people are afflicted by skin disease, it's not just physical symptoms that they suffer with. Skin disease could also lead to serious social impairment. It could affect the way that other people see us, or even the way we see and feel about ourselves. That's where my passion for dermatology started, and as the years went on, I just fell in love with the specialty even more. Which brings us to step two, getting a bachelor's degree. I've actually gotten a lot of questions on Instagram about what to focus on in high school and what people should do before college to prepare themselves to become dermatologists. In general, just get good grades and make sure that you get into college. Um, if you want to learn more about the skin or dermatology for, you know, your own pleasure, go for it. Um, but the most important thing is to make sure that you get into college. Once in college, you'll have to have a pre-medical concentration. At most colleges, pre-med is not a major, so you'll also have to pick a major too. So for me, I went to New York University, I was pre-med, and I also decided to major in Spanish. The reason for this was I said this was the last time that I was going to get to study the humanities like this, and I thought that being fluent in Spanish would be very helpful to me as a doctor, and it turned out that that was correct. So what are some tips that I have for this stage? If you know that you want to be a dermatologist when you're in college, the most important thing is to do well in those pre-med classes, do well in all of your classes, basically get good grades, prepare for the MCAT, which is a standardized test um, that um, is required for admittance into medical schools in the United States. Um, I would say don't I would say don't think that you're going to be able to just take the MCAT without taking a course. Um, much of what I remember from the MCAT was that it was not truly just a measure of your knowledge. It was also a measure of how good you were at taking that specific test, and I'm very glad that I took a prep course for it. In addition to that, um, you're going to need some recommendations from your professors, so try to form relationships with those teaching you. Step three get in and go to medical school. In the United States, you could become a dermatologist with either an MD or a DO. Um, these are different kinds of degrees, both of which make you a medical doctor. However, the process of getting into medical school is pretty difficult. According to the AAMC, in 2019, out of 53,371 applicants to medical schools, only 21,869 made it in, that's 41%. When you're trying to get into medical school, they'll be looking at your grades, um, extracurriculars, your letters of recommendation, how well you did on the MCAT, um, and basically just how who you are as a person, how well you do on the interviews. They're also gonna be looking at who you are as a person and if they feel like you're a good fit for the culture of their medical school. I also always tell prospective med school students that they should be really scrutinizing every school that they get an interview at and seeing if it's the type of place where they think that they would be happy and where they fit into the culture. Why is that? Because medical school is long and difficult. It typically consists of one and a half to two years of preclinical coursework where you learn the basic science behind the human body and overall health, including anatomy, histology, pathology, and all of that. And then the rest of the time is going to be spent on clinical rotations. Now, if you want to become a dermatologist, you're not just going to be studying dermatology in medical school. You'll have to rotate through internal medicine, pediatrics, psychiatry, all different kinds of specialties. What's more is that most medical school curriculums don't focus on dermatology that much, so you're going to have to seek out experiences in dermatology yourself. This includes elective rotations in your fourth year, away rotations where you go to other institutions and work with other departments, and basically forming a relationship with the Department of Dermatology at your institution. I went to medical school at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine in New York. 
Um, I chose this school because it was pass-fail in the first two years. That was one of the primary reasons for me going there. Also, I didn't want to leave New York for medical school. I think going to a school that was pass-fail was one of the best decisions that I ever made. Medical school was a really difficult time for me. Um, it's interesting because my whole life I was an A student, I graduated from college magna cum laude, I was at the top of my class, and then suddenly you're thrown into this setting where that's literally everybody. Everybody is so accomplished, so smart, and you know, you start comparing yourself to other people. This is especially true if you want to do dermatology because you need to be a top student in your class. You need to set yourself apart from the rest. And I gotta say, I was a pretty average med student. If I wanted to do anything else other than dermatology, I probably would have been happy with that. I was even told by one of my deans that I would be a stellar applicant for internal medicine, but that I shouldn't do derm. This obviously weighed on me a lot, and for much of my med school education, I was borderline depressed. It's funny because at the end of my first year of med school, I was on the verge of leaving and just having a career change. However, I asked some of my friends and classmates um, if they were happy in med school or if they were miserable like me. And almost invariably, uh, people told me that they were unhappy too. Medical school is really not easy and I feel like I got through it um, by pure grit, determination, having great friends that really supported me and helped me out, and also because I kept my eyes on the prize the whole time. Well, I did start to entertain going into different specialties such as reproductive endocrinology or emergency medicine. I always came back to derm. Another way that you kind of get stratified for the next steps of what you're about to go through is taking the USMLE exams. These are standardized exams that take place in and after medical school that you need to pass in order to be licensed to practice medicine in the United States. However, they are also used as metrics to kind of stratify you with other residency applicants afterwards. These exams are a major source of stress for many medical students. Which brings us to step 3B. This one's optional, it's doing a research fellowship in dermatology. This is something that's a little bit more common for med students on either the East or the West Coast. It's where you take a year out from school to devote solely to doing dermatology research and working with a dermatologist who will be your mentor. I did a research fellowship and I must say it was life-changing for me. Just when I had almost lost hope that I would be able to become a dermatologist, I got to spend a year focusing on it and remembering why I loved it. So my research mentor during my research fellowship was Dr. Adam Friedman at Albert Einstein College of Medicine at that time. And he is literally everything that you would want in a mentor. And these are some things that you should look for if you want to do a research fellowship. You want to end up with somebody who's going to publish during that year because your name will go on those papers. You're going to be doing that work. You want to be in a lab or a research group where they're actually publishing stuff. You want a research mentor who is going to go to bat for you, who is going to vouch for you when you apply for residency, who will write you a good letter of recommendation, and who is going to be your advocate. One thing that you can look into also is looking at the history of the fellows who have done research with that mentor and seeing if they matched and where they matched. So thankfully, in my research fellowship, I had all of those things, and there is no doubt in my mind that without that year, without those publications that I got to work on, and without the mentorship of Dr. Friedman, I would not have become a dermatologist. Step four, apply for residency. Getting into a dermatology residency is extremely difficult. The way that you get into residency in the United States is through a process called the National Residency Match Program. Basically, you send out applications to as many residencies as you want. Those residencies decide out of those applications which people they want to interview. You then interview for the residency programs. 
and rank those residency programs in the order of desirability for you. Meanwhile, the residency programs rank everybody who interviewed with them in order of desirability, and then a computer algorithm matches you together. It does this by trying to maximize the number of high-level matches on everybody's lists, and supposedly it does favor um, the desired program of the applicant. According to the NRMP, in 2017, there were 651 applicants to dermatology programs, and out of those, only 423 people were matched into dermatology residency positions. Now, what kinds of things are residency programs looking for? Obviously, good grades. In addition to that, good scores on the USMLE exams. Thirdly, good letters of recommendation, and a lot of times they're looking for letters of rec from people that are well known within dermatology. Dermatology in the United States is a really small field. We all know each other, so chances are somebody at each program is going to know your letter writers if they're dermatologists. Lastly, programs are really looking for people who are devoted to dermatology. And the way that you show that is through uh, your research, different volunteer opportunities or programs that you went through. I think one thing that's also favorable is when people have a really strong point of view with what they want to do with their training afterwards. How you do in the interviews of the different programs is very important too. These programs are looking for people that will be a good fit for their program. This is really important in dermatology versus other specialties because the residency programs tend to be smaller. When you're interviewing for residencies, you should also be looking to end up with a department that you feel you would fit in well at, too. Now, what happens if you don't match? Basically, the match program happens once a year, so if you don't match, chances are that you're going to have some sort of lag year. Um, people who don't match the first time quite often decide to do a research fellowship at this point. Doing a research fellowship after you finish medical school opens uh, some more opportunities for you to run clinical trials and the like. So say you match into dermatology, into your dream program. Then we move on to step five. You're ready to be a dermatologist, right? Well, you're wrong. While you're going through the residency match and trying to match into a dermatology program, in tandem with this, you're going to be matching into an internship. Not all medical specialties, but some, including dermatology, require a one-year internship in internal medicine, pediatrics, surgery, or what's called a transitional year where you rotate through multiple specialties. This one-year internship has to be done before you start your dermatology training. Now, while the word internship often connotes a unpaid learning opportunity, this really is a more than full-time job. You'll be working about 80 hours a week actually doing the job of being a doctor, being a resident in the specialty that you end up in. The main purpose of this is to learn more about medicine as a whole and to gain some autonomy before you do your dermatology training. Now, this might be controversial, but I've often questioned if this step of training is necessary for dermatologists. I'm not saying that I didn't learn a lot during my internship, I just feel that maybe a more abbreviated course of internship might be more fitting in order to spend more time learning dermatology. I did my internship in internal medicine at Maimonides Medical Center in Brooklyn. While that first year as an intern is grueling for so many reasons, um, the level of responsibility, the harsh work hours, lack of sleep, etc., I also feel like it's an experience that I kind of loved. That was when I truly felt like a doctor for the first time. I felt all of my training and all that time that I spent in medical school studying finally coming to fruition. It's also pretty scary because this is the first time that you'll be making life and death decisions about the care of another human being. However, it is really gratifying and exhilarating. Um, having a patient come to you sometimes on the brink of death and then watching them after their admission, you know, walk out, um, being 
fully okay again. Like that's a great feeling. My advice for this stage of training for somebody who's becoming a dermatologist, obviously learn as much as you can. Um, I would say try to uh, see what the inner workings of the hospital are like. Um, for almost all of us, we will be doing inpatient consults and residency. So knowing the inner workings of a hospital and how the primary teams do what they do will be invaluable when you need to be on consults. Also, so much of dermatology is related to internal medicine as well. So take this time to really get the basics down. Um, that will be invaluable later on. Lastly, step six, dermatology residency. This is three years spent really learning dermatology, learning the ins and outs, the disease processes, the treatments. While residency programs vary, in general, this is the time when you have your own patients um, and you will also have attending doctors who will be um, checking over all of your work and making sure that you're doing everything safely. Good dermatology programs include medical dermatology, surgical dermatology, cosmetic dermatology, pediatric dermatology, and dermatopathology. Now, dermatology residency doesn't just include clinical work. A good amount of time is also spent in didactics. I would say probably more than any other specialty, dermatology residency requires a lot of time spent studying, uh, learning the science behind skin diseases, um, learning the histology of skin diseases, uh, even learning about really rare diseases. I did my residency at George Washington University Hospital in Washington, D.C., and I really could not have asked for a better residency program. My training there was so well-rounded and prepared me so much um, for the next stage of my career. I think one of the hardest parts for me was uh, being able to juggle my clinical duties and then also find the time to study and have a personal life. And that was part of the growing pains for me. Some of my, um, you know, attendings in residency um, had told me that, you know, in the beginning, it seems like I was having a really rough time. And I think that that was true. It is a bit of an adjustment to finally have to be responsible for patients and then to finally actually be learning dermatology after so many years. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm glad that I was able to overcome that rough period in the beginning and um, eventually like prepare myself to be doing it on my own. I was able to find some form of work-life balance to actually, you know, study for the board exam that comes after residency to become a better surgeon and to really hone my cosmetic skills. And I even found the time to launch my blog and my entire online platform, which you all now know and love. Now I get to go forward to the next stage of my career, which is being an attending dermatologist. And there you have it. There is the breakdown of how to become a dermatologist. If you have any more questions about what this process entails, leave them in the comments below and I will answer as many as possible. As always, if you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up down below and subscribe so that you get notified every time I upload. Ciao.